Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the preview for the 2021 British Grand Prix. Now, last time out, F1 was at the Red Bull Ring for the third race in as many weeks and the second in a row at the circuit. But this time around, it is on to the famous Silverstone circuit for round 10 of the season. Wow, this year is moving quickly. There is a lot to look forward to this weekend and there's a lot to get through in this video as well. Coming up, I'll take a look at tyre strategy and weather, briefly cover what's changing and what's going on with sprint qualifying. And of course, as always, I will be making some probably shockingly bad predictions, but let's kick off with a look at the usual track stats ahead of this weekend. So a lap of the Silverson circuit runs for 5.891 kilometres and that is 3.660 miles if you prefer or 8.7 million nano wobbles if you'd like something totally made up. Why not? There are a total of 18 corners around the track. That's eight to the left and 10 to the right. And on Sunday, we will see a total of 52 racing laps. Just the two DRS zones this time around with the first running between turns five and six and the second down the hangar straight between turns 14 and 15. The race lap record is currently held by Max Verstappen who popped in a 127.097 last year, but the fastest ever F1 lap of the track is a 124.303 and that was set by Lewis Hamilton on his way to pole position last year. And on the subject of last year, what a dramatic finish to the weekend that was. As I'm sure you'll remember, with just three laps to go, Valtteri Bottas suffered a puncture and had to pit, which saw him drop all the way down through the field. I think he ended up P11, with Carlos Sainz and Lewis Hamilton also suffering blowouts soon after. And the Brit ended up finishing the race on effectively just three wheels, beating Max Verstappen to the line by just shy of six seconds, with Charles Leclerc taking the final step on the podium. And tyres will be worth keeping an eye on this weekend once again as Pirelli has confirmed that the new rear construction that was tested in Austria will be introduced for Silverstone. The manufacturer has explained that the tyres are the same weight but have a more robust structure and will be used between now and the end of this season. So, the compounds available for this weekend are the hardest in the Pirelli range and they are the hard C1, the medium C2 and the soft C3. Last year's race was won with a one-stop with Hamilton starting on the mediums and switching to the hards. And the longest stints on each compound, by the way, were 13 laps on the softs, 36 on the mediums and 40 on the hards. It is also worth noting that due to sprint qualifying, there is a new allocation for the weekend with drivers getting one less set of tyres for a total of 12. And that is divided up as two sets of hards, four sets of mediums and six sets of the softs. But more on sprint qualifying in just a moment. Weather-wise, it looks set to stay dry and sunny all weekend with highs of 24 degrees on Friday, 23 degrees on Saturday and 25 on Sunday. And at time of recording, the official chance of rain currently sits at less than 10%. However, if you are heading to the track this weekend, I'd still pack an umbrella if I were you and some wellies because this is the UK and you can never totally write off a sudden surprise downpour and it will save you spending £35 on a Silverstone branded brolly. Yeah, that still hurts and the best part is I actually ended up losing it. But anyway... Moving on then, and all the way back in 1950, Silverstone played host to the first ever Formula One World Championship race, and this weekend, it will be hosting the first ever sprint qualifying session. It is a decision that has divided the fan base, but how will it work and what is changing for this weekend? Well, first of all, there are what feels like hundreds of in-depth articles and videos out there that will go into more detail than I will today. And I will link some of those in the description if you're interested in having a read. But as this is a preview, I will just briefly go over the most important things that we need to know ahead of the trial. The headlines, if you like. So sprint qualifying is a race, although F1 seems keen to avoid using that word as it could take some of the shine off the main event on Sunday. But let's be honest, that's exactly what it is, a shorter race. It will be held across a distance of 100 kilometers and should run for around about half an hour and that works out at 17 laps at Silverstone. The grid for sprint qualifying will be determined by a normal qualifying session that will take place on Friday evening with the results of the sprint then forming the grid for the race proper on Sunday. During qualifying on Friday, drivers will only be allowed to use the soft compound of tyres, but will get a free choice of which tyres to start the sprint on come Saturday. And they will also get a free choice for Sunday's Grand Prix. But tyre allocation is changing across the whole weekend. During FP1, drivers will only be allowed to use two sets of tyres and then will receive five sets of the soft compounds for quali. There will be just the one set available for FP2, although teams can choose which compounds they want to use from that remaining allocation. One set of tyres are available for sprint qualifying, thanks to the fact there will be no mandatory pit stops, and the final two sets will be made available for the Grand Prix on Sunday. 
Points will be awarded to the top three finishers from sprint qualifying with three points for the winner, two points for second place and one point for third. We will not see a podium, although there will be a trophy for the winner. And F1 has teased a special presentation for the top three drivers that's very different in flavor to the podium, with the top three being taken on a victory parade around the track where they will be presented with specially designed wreaths in a nod to the sport's history. Officially, the winner of the sprint will go down in the record books as the pole sitter for Sunday's race and not the driver who takes pole on Friday. I say poll on Friday, first place, P1, whatever you want to call it. It is also worth remembering that there is no reverse grid element to all of this. There are a few other things well worth noting very quickly. If the sprint is stopped, so red flagged, it can be restarted, but the session must be completed within a 90 minute window. Cars do enter park Ferme conditions as soon as they leave the pit lane at the start of Quali 1 on Friday and they remain in place for the rest of the race weekend although some changes or adjustments can be made between Quali and the sprint to things such as springs and dampers or to alter camber toe or ride height of suspension components. And when it comes to penalties for things like gearbox or power unit changes they will be applied to the race proper and not to the sprint. The schedule for the weekend will also look very different as well. So FP1 doesn't start until 2.30pm UK time on Friday, but will still be just the one hour long with qualifying, which is the same as the Q1, 2, 3 format we have now starting at 6pm. FP2 gets underway at midday on Saturday with sprint qualifying starting at 430 but it is back to some sort of normality on Sunday with lights out on the hour at 3pm for the Grand Prix proper. And it is just worth reminding you that nothing has changed regarding the Grand Prix itself, aside from the fact that all drivers will be able to start on any tyre compound they like. Am I looking forward to all of this? Yeah, I am in some ways. I'm still very sceptical about it as I worry we'll just end up with a procession because ultimately, why take a risk trying to pinch P8 on the grid when you can hang back in P9 and have a go in the race on Sunday where it really matters, where the points are handed out? What I mean is it's surely not worth risking a collision which could see you start from the back of the grid on Sunday for the sake of one position. I hope I'm wrong, but we'll see. I'm definitely keeping an open mind to it all. And as I've said many times over the last few weeks, if we don't try it, we won't know for sure how it turns out. Some will say they know because that's what the internet is like, but they don't because we've never seen anything like this before in F1. At the end of the day, it could be amazing and everyone absolutely loves it. But if it isn't, it can just be thrown in the bin with every other failed format trial. But let me know what you think about it all down in the comments section. Are you looking forward to it or are you really hoping 2021 is the first and last we see of the new format? Right, let's move on from all of that then and have a look at some fast facts courtesy of Lights Out Blog. As already covered, the circuit hosted the first ever F1 World Championship event back in 1950 and over the years a total of 31 different drivers have taken victory. Lewis Hamilton holds a record for the most wins at the track with a total of 7 but Ferrari are the team with the most wins with 14. 140,000 fans are expected to attend the event across the weekend, I am not one of them. The race has an average finish rate of 61% and the average winning margin for the last 10 races at Silverstone is 11.160 seconds. And in 2003, the priest Cornelius Horan invaded the track mid-race on the hangar straight causing cars to swerve to avoid him and he was late to jail for two months for being a bit of a tit. I'm sure there's a legal term for that, but yeah, that'll do. Okay then, before I go, it's time for some predictions. Usual caveat, they're just a bit of fun, blah, 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 and don't take them too seriously, blah, blah, and blah. Sorry, it's kind of pointless saying that really because most of you get it by now. But anyway, you could easily argue that Silverstone is very much a Mercedes track. I mean, it's not even that much of an argument. They've won seven of the last nine races there with Max Verstappen and Sebastian Vettel being the only drivers able to stop them making it nine in a row. However, got to be said that we did say that about France and Red Bull won. In fact, Red Bull have won the last five Grand Prix this season. So I think we're at a point now where we need to perhaps not dismiss past form, but certainly stop relying on it and focus on the here and the now. The fact of the matter is Red Bull clearly has the fastest package right now. And although Mercedes is bringing some updates to the W12 this weekend, updates described as, quote, quite exciting, it is really hard to look past Red Bull and Max Verstappen. I do expect it will be closer between the two teams than it was in Austria because Silverstone should on paper suit the Mercedes better than the Red Bull Ring did. So hopefully we will see a much closer fight. But I am going all in on Red Bull again this weekend for all of the reasons I've just said. They are clearly the team to beat right now and Mercedes is on the back foot. There is no doubt about that. 
So Verstappen for P1 in quali on Friday and for the victory in sprint quali as well. Partly because I don't expect to see too much battling at the front on Saturday because of that whole risk versus reward thing I briefly talked about earlier. That would, of course, then put him on pole for the race proper. And I think he will convert that into the win as well. And as I said last time out, for the most part this season, I think we'll see a top two of Verstappen and Hamilton in some order. So I will put Lewis second, and then it will be a battle between Bottas and Perez for third, most likely. And I'll go with Checo for P3, although that fight could end up being one of the closest, if not the closest on the track. One thing I will say on Perez, though, he needs to sort his Saturdays out. That's usually what I say about Lance Stroll. Seems weird saying about somebody else, but you know what I mean. It's the Saturdays that seem to be really hampering him on a Sunday. If he started P4, P3, somewhere around there, he's obviously not going to have to spend the race making up what he didn't do in qualifying. And before you say it, yeah, I know Checo has always been a better racer than he is a qualifier, but, you know, he's in that fastest car now. He needs to be top four minimum. I will also say as well, because I always have something else to add for some reason, if Verstappen wins at Silverstone, he's looking very good for the title. Of course, there are still lots of races to come and anything can absolutely happen. But to beat Mercedes in France and at Silverstone would be a big step towards the title. It shows they can beat them just about anywhere. Mercedes and Hamilton, though, they really could do with this one this weekend. Sorry if a Verstappen win is boring to people now, but I'm not going to, as I've said before, throw out some wild prediction about Latifi and Mazepin dominating the race just because it satisfies a handful of people. But anyway, shut up, Sean. Elsewhere, I fancy Lando Norris to have a big weekend and perhaps he has got a shot at finding himself on that podium. He might need something to happen ahead of him, perhaps, or nicely timed safety car, something like that. But he is definitely one to keep an eye on. Expect another close fight as well between McLaren and Ferrari. That's been brilliant this season. And I fully expect to see that again. And whilst this isn't a prediction, I'm really hoping that Daniel Ricciardo has a good weekend. He could really do with it, to be honest. As for my sort of bold predictions for the weekend, if we have a bit of a chaotic race, George Russell could finally nick a point for Williams. Is that bold? Maybe. I'm not sure the track's going to suit that car quite as well as the Red Bull ring did. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, obviously. And let's say Fernando Alonso can make the top four again if we have a bit of drama. But quite frankly, in that situation, if anybody can... Fernando can. That should be a catchphrase. Anyway, that is it for the British Grand Prix preview then. But you can let me know your thoughts and your predictions ahead of the weekend in the comments section down below. So as always, who are you backing for pole in Saturday's sprint quali? Who do you think will win on Sunday? And what is your top three? Now, I will be back soon with another video and we will be live shortly after the Grand Prix on Sunday with the usual race reaction. In the meantime, though, if you did enjoy this video, then please do leave a like as it really does give the channel a boost. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future streams or videos. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.